Hi Vijay, thank you for joining us today. Could you please introduce yourself and Volante? It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks, Mike. And my name is Vijay Vadiraju. I'm a co-founder and CEO of Volante Technologies. Volante uh, has been in business since 2001 and we service uh, financial institutions, uh, right from capital markets to banks, more uh, so in the banks uh, and the most uh, large part, portion of our business is in payments technology. This year, Cybos themes cover a wide range of ground. The first day was around delivering digital value. What does this mean for you at Volante and your customers? So when we talk about digital value, we need to look at uh, what it means actually, to whom it means. Uh, uh, what we uh, look at is who the end customer is. So we look at our customers are banks and banks uh, they have their own customers who could be consumers, uh, small businesses or corporations. So what does it mean uh, for those customers, uh, the digital value? That's what we want to look at. Um, and obviously these days, uh, it's very clear that everybody wants real time payments. Uh, nobody is looking at receiving a physical check, taking it to the bank and depositing it and getting the clearance of that and the funds available after three days. So that those days have gone. And if you're still in that world, that means you're not doing something right. Um, so the banks are moving very fast to meet the customer demands of real-time payments. And then the second one is uh, available all the time, 24 by seven. Uh, that's very, very important for them. And, uh, and then giving them the experience of omni-channel, whichever way you do your mobile device, you go your online to your laptops, if you go to your, uh, physical branches, uh, doesn't really matter. They want uh, a, uh, a, an experience which is uh, uh, similar to every one of them in the same lines, not uh, difficult or different from each one of them. That means you need to um, have uh, uh, investments in uh, custom tailored solutions for their customers, meaning our banks have to do that very quickly. Uh, in a timely fashion, not increasing the cost, and then uh, look at um, uh, receiving uh, or at least realizing the uh, uh, investments uh, in a timely fashion, meaning the return on investments in a timely fashion. These are very important. So the digital value is to the end customers. That's what we look at all the time. Um, and especially corporates this day, these days, they are looking at uh, what are they looking at from the banks? They want uh, frictionless uh, uh, interaction, uh, uh, meaning uh, right, right from onboarding, like easy uh, integration, uh, API-based uh, services, um, access to uh, widest range of payment types, uh, real-time payments, and liquidity management, um, ISO 2022 messaging, particularly important because and the power of data in those messages is so much that they want to realize that. So these are the things which um, customers want or their the customer needs are. So what can banks do to deliver this? Um, obviously they have to have modern technologies to do, do this. Legacy technologies cannot uh, help them out. So end to end they have to digitize this and digital transformation is uh, the way to go for banks to satisfy the needs of the customers. And even uh, at Cybos, we have done uh, on the day one, we have done, uh, we, we have chaired a panel uh, session, which is uh, with our clients, uh, existing clients, Bank of New York, Mellon, City, and Goldman Sachs. They all talked about the exact and uh, the same topic about digital value. And it can be accessed through our website. Uh, you don't have to register for Cyboss. You can just go to our website and register volontetech.com and you can listen to the, uh, 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 the panel discussion where the, all these topics are uh, discussed. So uh, digital value means for us, it's end customer of the bank or the financial institution is more important what they're looking for and how we satisfy those and how we help banks or the financial institutions to achieve that in a timely fashion, in a cost-effective manner, and uh, realize the return on investment in a much faster fashion. So it sounds like innovation is a key element in delivering greater digital value. It was also a key element in the Cybos agenda, with responsible innovation being the focus of many sessions and tied to the notion of responsibility was the theme of a day. Banking for Humanity, 
What is your take on that? Sure, no, very important point. It's very dear to me as a person. I always look at much bigger things than just uh, a business and how uh, we all, meaning humans, can help each other uh, in the world. And I, I'm a strong believer of global citizenship. So uh, that uh, said, uh, said um, let's look at, uh, let's start at innovation, right? Innovation in banking is not new at all. Uh, it, is, it has been there for a very long time. And banks have been doing innovation quite a number of years. But what is new is uh, the sheer acceleration, the rate of the innovation increasing across the board in areas of banking services. Um, uh, that digital modernization, uh, enabling banks to create service offerings uh, faster and uh, at much lower cost and, uh, that, than before. Um, and the, the, the reason being uh, uh, is customers are demanding or their customers, meaning financial institutions, customers are demanding that. Um, and then next part of the question is about the responsible part of it, which I'm very uh, dear to. Um, if you look at uh, uh, how innovations are going to help uh, uh, um, us, uh, meaning as uh, humans, be more responsible and uh, uh, inclusive uh, uh, nature of taking everybody along with us, I think that's very important for us. So if you look at the uh, globally, there are 1.7 billion adults still remain unbanked. That is 31% of adults uh, globally are unbanked. Um, uh, China is leading, uh, followed by India. And seven countries uh, are home uh, 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 to nearly half the world's uh, unbanked population, uh, which is uh, really uh, uh, staggering numbers, actually. And if, if we can create uh, systems uh, whereby we can include all of them uh, to be uh, uh, doing banking, that will be wonderful actually, because it can, it can create miracles uh, for upliftment of uh, uh, economies and uh, bringing a uh, lot of people out of poverty. Uh, lots of great things can happen. It's going to be very, very difficult. So where, where does it uh, end then? Or where, how do we go and address these challenges or opportunities, if you can call them? Um, it's two ways. One is uh, banks or the financial institutions um, working with third party providers, uh, whether they are cloud providers or fintechs, um, collaborating uh, uh, that allows a lot more innovation, uh, uh, which is more responsibly uh, uh, important as well for the human humanity uh, benefits. So it's, it's innovation, not just for the sake of uh, business benefits, but uh, really getting um, uh, everybody getting involved uh, in the world. I think that's, that's more important. So, and, and what we have done from our part actually is uh, uh, in the, uh, in the, in the geographies where we do business, we uh, are trying to, um, uh, bring uh, uh, banks, uh, all kinds of banks, not just uh, the banks which are uh, tier one banks, but even smaller and lower end banks uh, to be able to have the same level of uh, technology access as leading banks so that they can provide uh, to their small uh, and medium sized customers and consumers who can't afford uh, high uh, banking charges uh, so that we, uh, we, we do our part by giving uh, the banks uh, the ability to do it at a lower cost. So that, uh, and the example is uh, uh, last year, we announced that real-time payments uh, is free of charge. And so they can, they can uh, banks or smaller banks can uh, get that service uh, in a record time uh, at no cost. Uh, and then service there and customers to provide those uh, real-time payments. So that's one example of what we take that as a responsibility from our, on our shoulders. And um, if you look at uh, uh, um, uh, basically the whole idea is uh, lowering the uh, barrier of barriers of entry uh, to technology modernization for every bank, every country, every remote place, so that um, everybody gets a chance to uh, be included uh, into the growth of the uh, uh, humanity. Basically, we're all growing and we're all 
um, uh, want to not let others be let down and we want to take them along with us. So I think this innovation uh, with responsibility will help uh, uh, quite a bit. And I feel like cloud technologies are going to be the forefront of this innovation because uh, for remote places where you cannot go and establish data centers, which are going to be very expensive, not just expensive, it's going to be very difficult uh, to, uh, to monitor them, uh, to manage them, uh, because in the, for the security reasons and uh, all those reasons, I think uh, cloud technologies could help uh, us reach um, uh, remote places uh, in a secure fashion where um, people can um, uh, or banks can provide services. Now, not just banks, even net network providers like uh, credit card providers and uh, who, who everybody clearing houses, everybody could have access so that they can provide these services in a very timely fashion to the remote test part of the world uh, at, 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 at a, an affordable cost to everybody. So that, that's, uh, that's what I strongly believe in. It's been quite a year, global pandemic and the first virtual cyborgs as a result. Any closing comments on what the future might hold for financial services? Again, um, it, this is uh, very difficult times for a lot of, time, a lot of people uh, throughout the world. The pandemic that uh, we are currently experiencing is unprecedented in our lifetimes, as we all know. Um, humans, uh, uh, human and social impacts are, of course, the most important. And I personally hope that the worst is over or behind us. Um, there are still uh, uh, traces of it and then there are fears of reoccurrences of it, but I hope it's not as severe as, as it was the first time. And uh, it, it's very hard uh, when these kind of uh, um, uh, black swan days come. We don't know where these events come from, how uh, these are. Uh, so it's difficult to predict how the uh, global environment is going to be. But one thing is for sure we can talk about in the financial industry, in this landscape. Uh, definitely everything is changing fundamentally, shifted towards uh, and it's favoring towards financial institutions who, um, who are looking at modernizing our digital transformation is happening. Uh, if if, uh, if uh, financial institutions are still looking at contact full or uh, analog uh, uh, um, uh, of um, uh, manual processing, will simply not be able to survive in this transition. Um, if they, if they move to the new world uh, of modernization and if they have not already done it, if, uh, if they don't jump on that bandwagon now of digital transformation or modernization of their technologies, I think they'll be lost. Whether they're big, small, regardless of their size, uh, whether they're banks or non-banks really doesn't matter. They're all going to um, be suffering a lot in the coming days and years. So they have to move fast so that agile, institutions which are able to move fast are going to be uh, the survivors or people who are going to uh, lead uh, in, the, in, in, the, in the decades to come. Um, so if you look at uh, the amount of money or the budgets they allocate uh, banks, uh, it's, very, uh, it's not as much as fintechs uh, do. So one of the things I would uh, think is uh, what would uh, future hold is banks working very closely with fintechs. Fintechs spend 70% of their budget on innovation. Banks spend 35%. So if you look at banks who are willing to spend uh, their time and cooperate with uh, vendors, uh, fintechs like us, uh, I think they, they have much better success rate uh, and also uh, go to the market much faster uh, so we, as uh, as Volante, we always have been working with our clients right from the day one as uh, trusted partners. Uh, so I think that partnership model of working, uh, whether it's banks or financial institutions working with vendors as partners and vendors working with financial institutions as partners is the key driver uh, for the success of these financial institutions, as well as serving the customers uh, to, uh, to, to meet their needs, basically. Uh, it, it's very important. And uh, the other aspect of pandemic is, uh, even though 
uh, we have seen uh, quite a bit of disturbance a uh, lot of human uh, life loss i'm pretty bullish about the future of humanity and uh, uh, i am sure we will all get out of this uh, and will become much more stronger uh, and we will be able to address uh, all the needs of the humans in a much better fashion but coming to the financial services industry i think um, i feel the future is much brighter uh, the uh, unfortunately all these things have caused a lot of human loss and all that and a lot of uh, agony for us but at the same time it did help us to accelerate in especially in the financial industry to move to modernization to move to uh, digital transformation in a much faster fashion and where we are today from volantis point of view we are here to help the financial institutions to meet those goals in a much faster fashion at a low cost and with the guarantee that their return on the investment is much faster